What's going on guys? I want to say thank you to everyone that's bought a course and thank you to the Nerve Tribe that supports the channel. Uh, I realized just how important and how helpful you guys are and I want to just say thank you at the top of the hour because before we get into this, the real estate clown show that is coming in 2023 2024 and 2025. Um, I keep hearing that the majority of millionaires were created in real estate. But here's the thing that I've looked at. Most of the people who get into real estate have to take loans or get partners or create syndication. So the money is quite diluted and one of the things that I consistently see in these videos get a lot of views how to buy a house with no money down and here's what I have come to understand to get in the real estate game with no money requires this a person that has a problem with their property, a person that is desperate, a person that is financially pressured. And this is a commonality that wholesaling, subject to, and creative financing all have in common. Because like there's a piece of property that wasn't too far where I used to live that was vacant, the house was deteriorating, and I'm quite sure that a lot of subject to and creative financing people came after these people and they didn't get no traction because these people were neither financially pressed nor desperate. They didn't have, because anything for subject to, wholesaling, creative financing, you need someone who has a house and they're in financial trouble or they're struggling. That's the key, right? And what I am getting ready to say is for all of you people who want to get in real estate with no money down, get into wholesaling. Wholesaling, I think, is going to take a hit. I'm going to explain why in a minute. And creative financing because right now, literally 72% of the people who bought homes in the last two years regretted it because they were paying over price, they were waiving the inspection, and a lot of people got sat stuck with some turkeys. They got stuck with some bad houses. And I don't feel that we're gonna have a dramatic nationwide crash because all you know real estate if you know anything about real estate real estate is very local so what goes on in Bozy, idaho is not going on in atlanta georgia but i feel that the areas where the property um, the prices didn't like zoom up they're going to be fine but i do feel that in areas that had these serious run up in prices there's gonna be serious corrections and there's gonna be serious crashes. And the people who bought and overpaid these houses are gonna become the new subject to or the wholesale people because these people are gonna be financially challenged and pressed. And I feel that this is gonna be a serious opportunity for those of you who wanna get in real estate with no money down. So go ahead, start watching the wholesale videos. Go ahead and start watching subject two. And this is one of the things that I consistently see with the marketing of subject to wholesaling. I consistently see that you don't need any money, which is fundamentally false. Let's take Airbnb arbitrage. If you don't know what that is, Airbnb arbitrage is when you go out, find a property that someone else owns, and then say, hey, I wanna take your property, I wanna lease your property, and I wanna put it on Airbnb, and you get there okay, and that's Airbnb arbitrage. 
and I have literally seen countless ads talking about, do you only need no money? Got a question. How many of you have rented an apartment or a house with absolutely no money? Put that in the comments. How many of you absolutely, so that's fundamentally false that you don't need any money. Credit. You're not going to get multiple properties or good properties. And also, for those of you who didn't know, when you rent a property from a corporation, they have certain credit bureaus that they hit. They don't hit your Equifax or TransUnion or Experian. They hit a subsidiary. But if you're dealing with a mom and pop or an average landlord, more than likely they're gonna hit, I don't know, cause I'm not in real estate, so I'm, not, I'm gonna leave that alone. But you're gonna need decent credit to rent. And if you're going to have multiple inquiries, uh, that's gonna be real interesting because they make it sound so easy. You don't need any money, you don't need any credit. No, nothing, you don't need none of that. And you just go out here and get all these properties with no money, no credit. And this is one of the things like, you're gonna need money to rent the place. You're gonna need money to furnish the place. On the cheap, that's $3,000. And if you're gonna do this with multiple properties, let's just say you're a real good steward of your money, you could get a screaming deal, and you can rent five properties for 1,500 bucks a month. Average one bedroom is currently renting for 1,700. So, I feel the coming real estate market is going to create a lot of pain a lot of pain and we're going to see who are the heavy operators let me go ahead and just say something every time that i talk about the markets i always get someone who's like well you don't know anything about the markets and this is going to be a separate video but why are we in the markets why are people getting into real estate they're getting in real estate to make money. So I'm in business to make money. You're in the, you're in the markets to make money, right? I'm better at making money than you are with my business than you are in your market, your, your stock market portfolio. I've seen, I've watched a lot of videos and I've heard many people in the markets lament that they didn't have enough money to make the plays that they wanted to play. Yet me, someone who doesn't have market knowledge, I don't have to worry about the pattern day trader rule because I got the money. I don't, it's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. But what we're going to see is who is a heavy operator. And I'm going to make some assumptions here. I feel that the people who have money, whether they have experience or not, if they have money are going to do better than the folks who are doing the creative financing subject to and I'm going to explain why I feel that wholesaling is going to become problematic. What is wholesaling? If you don't know, wholesaling is you drive around or you send out letters, you send out mailers and you find distressed homeowners. Ideally, you want to find someone who has a distressed homeowning situation where the house is paid off and then you convince this homeowner, hey, I know your house is worth 200, but would you take 150? And then what you do is you get a contract between you and the homeowner, giving you the right to sell that house. And then you flip that contract to um, a home flipper. And that's why I think it's gonna be a problem because during this crazy market, you're gonna have a lot of people who are gonna be in pain, who are going to be open to wholesaling and subject to, but the number of people who are gonna be able to get financing 
to flip homes is going to drop and the number of people who can get a mortgage for homes is going to drop. So that's why I think wholesaling is about to take a hit because you're just not going to have a lot of people in the position to pay cash money for that house to give the homeowner their 130 and to give you the wholesaler your $70,000 assignment fee. I feel that wholesaling is about to take a serious, serious hit, even though there will be a lot of people in the market for wholesaling, but the wholesalers are gonna run into an exit situation because it's just not gonna be, and this is something that's funny because I, I, I went ahead and opened up another business account yesterday I was talking to the banker. Right now, we do not have a credit crunch. There's so much money in the market. We do not have a credit crunch, which is unlike what happened in 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, there were people who literally had their HELOCs closed. But we, at the moment, we don't have a credit crunch, but there's plenty of money available. There's trillions of dollars available. What we're gonna run into is a qualification issue like me right now. I, on paper, qualify for Chase's business line of credit and Chase's credit cards. But because I have opened up so many personal accounts and I have way too many inquiries, I cannot get a Chase business line of credit or a Chase business credit card or a Chase personal credit card because I'm beyond 524. So from a qualification standpoint, I don't qualify. And I feel that this right here is going to be the stick in the mud. This is going to be the big, big problem because I don't see us running out of money. Like these FinTechs, these new, you know, Divi, uh, Ramp, Brex, Capital on Tap, they're giving out credit cards like candy and lines of credit but what i like i said i don't feel that we're going to run into a credit crunch like we did in 2008 9 10 11 12. what we're going to run into is a qualification crunch because a lot of these people who are going to be in these upside down houses because there are some people who let's say you were one of those poor unfortunate souls that bought at the top of the market, you overpaid, and now the market has corrected on you. And let's say you paid 550 for your house, but now the marketplace is saying your house is worth 450, but your mortgage is for 550. You, my friend, now have a problem if you want to exit that problem, ex exit that property. If you're going to stay there and live there and just pay the mortgage, you won't have no problems. But if you're trying to sell that property, you're gonna have a problem. You're gonna have a big, big problem. And this is why, I, cause here's the thing. I look at myself. Whenever I buy a house, I go out with a shopping list. I have never lived in a house that I had regrets after I moved in because I went for a shopping list and I usually look at a lot of houses and if I can get, if I got 10 things on my list and this house satisfies eight, I'll move forward. And that's how I buy property. I would not ever waive an inspection. I would just, cause once again, as a business owner, I know if you're patient, deals come. There's, I don't care what the market looks like. Right now, there's a deal in the real estate market for the savvy, sophisticated, well-qualified real estate business people. Notice I didn't say real estate investor. Uh, if you are, cause there's a guy in Alabama who's a real estate business person and he's been in the game for a long, long time and he typically rehabs 20 to 30 houses per month and he uses his own money because he's been in the game like 30 years. 
So he is his own bank. He has enough money to buy and fund the rehab of 30 houses and flip them. And people like him are gonna be fine. They're gonna be fine because since he's using his own money, if the house sits on the market a little longer than normal, no big problem because he's not paying a hard money lender. Because this is one of the things I see. Um, I believe in building cash flowing businesses. And uh, to me, a lot of real estate investors, including me, Kevin, and Graham Stephan, are absolutely horrible business people. Horrible business people. Because to me, once again, to me, to go out, leverage your credit, get an asset, and let's say the mortgage is 2000 and the most you can rent that house out for is 2200 a month. That's just, to me, that's horrible. That's terrible. Because you got to put that money, that 200 bucks in the bank to pay property taxes unless the property taxes are part of your mortgage payment. So you have, you took a hit on your credit report. You've extended yourself. And every time you buy a mortgage in your name, and if you run into a problem, you run into a problem of damaging your credit, which is the primary driver of your acquisition strategy. To me, it, it, like, like that's just horrible. It's just horrible because you can start a small business, and I, you know, people are like, what kind of business? You can start pressure washing. You can start a car wash. You can start a cleaning service. You can start an eBay business, and literally make five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars per month with way less risk and a lot more return. But I think people are in love with the romantic nature of being a real estate investor. As someone asked me, do business owners make more than real estate investors? Absolutely, because once again, my opinion, these are the opinions of Glendon Cameron, if you've got five mortgages and you only have positive cash flow of 800 bucks per month off these five mortgages, that just sucks. That's just like, so you have extended yourself. Five houses could easily be a million dollars. So you're in a million dollars worth of debt for $800 return per month. That's like $10,000 a year. So you've got a million dollars leveraged, because this is the word everyone, you know, leveraged. I don't ever use my own money. I don't ever use my own money. And as long as everyone pays their rent on time and you don't run into any problems, you can play that game. But, <laughs> this is a lot of pain's going to come in this market. Because we haven't even got to the point where the layoffs are about to start. Because we're gonna have a lot of people lose their jobs. But, like for me, once again, with my level of business experience, I have not had a job in 24 years. That's how long I've been a successful, self-employed or business owner person. And to me, the returns of leveraged real estate don't make no sense to me. They don't make no sense based upon my exposure. When I can sit in this chair, create some online courses and make six figures in a month and not leave my damn house. Real estate is not that attractive to me. Now, however, in the future, in the future, I'm going to start looking at some real estate because if you, once again, let me cook here, let me cook for a minute. Let's say you had $10 million cash and you deployed that in real estate. At that point, let's say, and you didn't buy 
cheap houses because cheap houses gather you cheap rent. Cheap houses in bad markets don't appreciate that much. So you go out and you go in a good market and you pay a premium and let's see, 10 million, 400, 500,000, you get yourself 20 houses with your 10 million. And of your, your, you know, these houses you can rent for 35 to $4,000 per month. So 10 times 3,500, 35. So you got 70, 70, 70 to $80,000 a month coming in from rent, which over a period, you know, a year at 70 is 840,000. And at 80, it's almost a million a year. So if you can get close to that $80,000 per month, in 10 years, you have your, well, less than 10 years, because rents go up. Less than 10 years, you have your 10 million back in rent, and now you have to start paying taxes on these earnings because you've gotten all your capital back. Um, that makes more sense to me than going out because I was reading the story of this guy had like 50 doors and he was only making like $15,000 per month positive cash flow. And once again, what I know has happened in the economy, you're having a lot of people who are choosing to live in a van versus rent an apartment or a house. This is going to continue to grow. So I feel that the people, the hedge funds, like this guy in Alabama, who are their own banks, have their own money, this group of people in situations are gonna be fine because they've got money and they can weather the storm. However, the leveraged people, because here's the thing uh, with the subject too. During this cycle, because it is a cycle, because it's not gonna be like that forever, it's gonna be hard to exit. Now, you might be able to get a renter in this property, and if you go out and get you, let's just let's just say for instance, you go out and get you 10 houses subject to, and you put renters in. Depending upon your financial exposure and what kind of money you like to make, that might work for you. Because you don't have no credit, no status, no verification, and you are controlling 10 pieces of property with 10 renters. And let's say you're really good at this and you, you get these houses. Because here's the thing with subject two, the mortgage that's in place, you can't change. So if you go subject two to one of these houses that has a mortgage that's greater than what you can sell it for, guess what's gonna happen to the rent? The rent rate is gonna go down. So that can be problematic. But let's say you find 10 people who got in trouble and they bought their houses years and years ago and they have a fairly decent mortgage in place and you can get these houses subject to, and let's say you got a place where the mortgage and everything is 800 bucks, but you can rent it out for 1600. That starts to work. That starts to work because you do that times 10, it's $8,000 a month off 10 properties. And with this meltdown that you're, that's going to happen, you're going to see some smart, some shrewd, some um, very clever people in the market who are going to make some money. But, but I saw a video where a guy was talking about why buying on the dip was a bad idea. I was wondering when I was gonna start seeing these videos because the market's been down most of the year. And you buy on the dip and it dips more. And you buy on the dip and it dips more. Uh, at some point, the average person's gonna be like, uh, this ain't working. So it's gonna be real interesting to see what the stock people do in the next 24 months as the market keeps going down. Because this is my prediction. After the election, everything's gonna fall. Everything. Everything's gonna fall. Inflation's gonna keep trucking. 
you're gonna see the layoffs, it's gonna be the worst Christmas ever, but position yourself because what does subject to wholesaling and creative financing needs? It needs a person who owns a house that's in trouble. And a lot of people are about to be in trouble. A lot of people, because I'm just sitting here like, let me just go ahead and throw an idea out here. I'm thinking about hiring the person to go out and look for these deals. And if I can get 20, maybe 30 subject twos with good mortgages in place, that might be worth doing. That might be worth doing. Because once again, like I said, for the skilled, for the heavy duty operator, there's always deals in the market. There's always deals. I don't care if the market's up, down. For the people with the right skill sets, there's always deals. And I'm just sitting there thinking because, good news, I finally got my TD Ameritrade account open. So I have TD Ameritrade, I have Schwab, and I have Cobra. And I haven't even started day trading yet. You wanna know why? Let's, let's talk about that. Um, I'm only going to do this part time. I'm not going to devote all day to trading because from where I sit and from what I know, running a business is way easier than trading. It's way easier. I'm just looking at the crap I went through just to set up my corporate brokerage account. So this is going to be kind of like a part time look. I'm not going to go full speed and you know and once again every time i mention trading i get all of these broke people and i'm gonna find broke people you don't make the kind of money i make i know that i'm rubbing my balls all the way across the computer screen but see i come from a period in time where if someone was doing better than you you would respect that person and listen to that person but with you narcissistic little monkeys well, I have my trading knowledge. And I'll ask a simple question. How much has your trading knowledge, how much money has your trading knowledge made you? My business knowledge has made me millions. Nothing. Crickets, crickets, crickets. And this is one of the things. I think there is a religion around the stock market, investing. It's a religion. Because every time I put up some, and once again, I, I put up a challenge. I never said I was going to create a trading course. There's not one video. It's like, how are you going to create a trading course? I was like, hmm. let, me, let me go ahead and tell you what I'm going to sell because it's challenging. I'm going to sell how to set up your corporate situation because uh, let me see. I just got I just got that bad boy today. And this is going to be my ad spin card. Maybe, um, because with American Express, you can get four extra points on advertising. So I may go ahead and get an, a, a gold card, but essentially this is a credit card. This is a credit card, $70,000 limit, right? So. I'm going to probably start, because I, I haven't used it, but I got to start using it just so I can get my uh, sign-up bonus. But I am getting ready to sell the corporate situation because there are literally 300,000 YouTubers who are not properly set up. I guarantee you that Graham Stephan, Meet Kevin, they're not properly set up, I guarantee it. And I'm getting ready to start doing some advertising that's gonna sell that because I'm really good at setting up corporate situations. That's what I'm gonna sell, because that's something I do, that's something I know how to do. But I'm not going to create a trading course when I don't even know what the hell price action means. I'm being 100% honest. This is why I'm not going to invest a lot of quality time into learning how to trade. Number one, I'm not desperate. Number two, I have multiple streams of income. And number three, I think 
running and operating the business is easier than trading. And um, it's, it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. So it's this new training. And if you want the new training, cause I, I gotta sit down and think about how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna be talking about trust and holding companies and paying yourself because if you just pay yourself out of an LLC where I've seen a lot of videos to just like write a check from your LLC to your personal name. And I've not researched it, but I think a lot of people have gotten into tax trouble because you, you hear everyone's like, hey, you know, just put some money in the bank and aside for taxes. Um, we got people who cannot even manage their credit correctly, cannot manage their dollars correctly. I'm finding it hard to believe that all of these entrepreneurs are just taking draws and being sure to put 30% in their tax account so they can pay their taxes at the end of the year. I don't think that's working. I, I, just knowing what I know about people and knowing how people manage money, that's problematic. And I'm going to create a course teaching people how to do it where you like, once again, uh, I just cut myself a distribution because I have an S Corp. And I'm gonna teach people how to do that game. Uh, with the distribution, I didn't have to pay uh, payroll taxes. And uh, so we're getting into a lot of true business game, a lot of true, and once again, if you're in the program, because like I said, I haven't even emailed people because I'm still thinking about it. I'm still shaping it up. I'm still putting it together. But if you buy the program, I'm going to give you this new training. And we're gonna talk about business credit. And it's gonna be in the first comment or first link below. Like, you watch these videos about business credit. Get your Granger, get your net 30s. Let me go ahead and tell you about my business credit situation. I have no net 30s, not a one. I'm not going out and getting a bunch of accounts from stuff I'm not gonna use. Um, I do have websites. I do have a business address. Interesting thing with that. If you have American Express, you and you have a personal account with American Express, American Express is gonna send your business credit cards to your personal address, even if you put your business address on the application. That's just a little nugget for you. But uh, I, have, I don't have a number in 411. You know what number I used? I used my cell phone number. I have gotten American Express, Divi, Terpargo, Marcus, and I think once I get this uh, situation with Truism, I have a, so I'm gonna have probably $400,000 in business credit without having all that stuff they say you need you, you need to have in true real business credit. Because the thing that they don't talk about, is like you gotta get these net 30s and all this other stuff. Um, if you have bank statements and tax forms, that's gonna weigh more weight. It's gonna be much more influential in you getting that line of credit or that credit card versus um, a net 30. I'm just, you know, because once again, I do this stuff. I'm really doing this stuff. I'm not regurgitating what some other YouTuber said. I actually am doing this stuff and I have the receipts to, to prove it. So one of the things that you should understand and acknowledge is setting the standard. Because like I said, I feel for really smart, well-positioned, creative people, the next 36 months, let's, let's start in 2023, January 2023 to 2026 is going to be an amazing time for people who are smart, sophisticated, and know how to manage money and get in real estate. It's going to be, it's just going to be a virtual, um, what do you call them? It's not a cafeteria. Uh, it's going to be a, vir a virtual buffet of deals. You can go over here and get some potatoes. You can go over here and get some steak. You can get some carrots. There's just going to be deals all over the place. 
And for the people who can figure out an exit strategy, they're gonna be able to scoop up as much real estate as they can handle. It's coming, it's just coming. But for those people who are listening to all of the wholesale people, because one of the things I've seen, the people who are on real estate and the people on the stock market channels, they say different messages, but the vibe is the same. Oh, it's easy, it's simple. And I think a lot of people who are not sophisticated, who are not careful, are gonna get eaten alive. Just gonna get eaten alive. But there's about an amazing opportunity. And also, I keep hearing, you know, I don't think that the majority of millionaires were made in millions of real estate. Knowing what I know about money, business, um, I feel that a lot of people, now that could be true if you look at the asset-based millionaire, the people who have like a $400,000 or $500,000 stock portfolio and a $500,000 house, that person on paper is a millionaire, even though they could be struggling. <laughs> I mean, they can really be struggling. But I don't know. I don't really know about that because what I know and what I'm getting ready to start teaching, uh, like I said, um, you know, 2023 is going to start. I know a lot of people don't have their LLCs. They don't have their holding companies set up. So we're going to start teaching people, breaking that off. And um, like I said, I'm about to get ready to run some wild ads. They're going to be kind of wild because they're in my head right now. They're not on YouTube and they're gonna be edited. So I'm gonna start running them because I've got multiple credit cards where I can run ads and we're gonna see, we're gonna see. But if you want the new training, go ahead, get in the program and you will get the new training.